That's a good fish. Show me after. Okay. It's a good fish. They're all good, man. I don't care if it's eight inches, eight pounds. I don't care. They're all good, man. Striper. Oh yeah. Now he's off. Now he's off. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Tim, holy cow, look at that. <laughs> you had a really good one, Eric. Tim, what's going on over here? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. This is going to be a really cool video. I'm going to go ahead and get right to it right now. This video is going to show you guys a little bit about what I've learned about striped bass behavior recently. Uh, the reason I've learned a little bit more is because of this live sonar I'm using. This is not going to be a commercial for Active Target, you know, sonar or simmer or nothing like that. It's just going to show you what I've learned about striped bass behavior and the behavior of the bait fish. I've just learned so much in the last few months, I want to share it with you guys here. So uh, we're jigging up with these big spoons, the Big Ben Parker spoons, and we're finding these isolated schools, and they're just hanging in these certain areas for whatever reason, and we hang over them and jig them up. Now, most of the time we find these schools, we drop down and we're all, we're all hooked up. I mean, it's just fantastic. But about every other trip, we'll find these schools and they just won't bite. I mean, they'll look around at the spoon, but won't hit it or will just barely mouth it. So there's that uh, live sonar. Look at that right there. Now to the left of the screen, I'm sorry, let me show you this real quick. Look at that. Look at the uh, side scan, how many fish are there. That is a massive, massive school. So you'll see the jig going up and down here. That is the active target sonar. And all the way to the left where that jig is going up and down, that's the bow of the boat. So you can see that's my nephew up there. That's his jig going up and down, okay? Now all the way to the right of the screen is further away, you know, so it's forward looking. But the, you know, the jig going up and down is right below the bow. Look at all the fish looking at that jig. They are all around it. They are enamored with it. They, they are just absolutely obsessed with it. They're watching it, but they won't attack it. Now, they'll gently mouth it once in a while if you see this and really watch close. I have hours of footage of this day. I mean, they just won't touch the spoon. They won't attack it. Look at them following it. More and more stripers come, the more he jigs it. But they won't attack it. Now, how can we get them to attack it, right? How can we get them to attack it? Well, we can try other baits, do other, other things, and I'm sure we can catch some fish out of this. But on this day here, I had some, you know, amateurs in the boat. Less than pros, you might say. And uh, the only thing they can really catch any fish on was this spoon. So it might go an hour of doing this, but fish all under the boat, and finally one would hook up. So when one would hook up, all of a sudden other guys would hook up. But they would only hook up after someone else already had a fish on. So we probably caught eight or nine fish this day, you know, this day, but they all came in little tiny groups over an eight-hour, a long eight-hour day. Look at those fish. Just count them up. It was like this all day long. So uh, watch here, you can see my son there on the left side. He's jigging up a spoon, just like everybody else. And whack, he, he hooks one right here, and he hands the rod off to his nephew. He's only about 10 years old here, so he's gonna run up to the fight, up to the battle fight this fish. And this is some really cool stuff here, guys. So he's fighting a fish. Now, we know that other striped bass are following that hooked fish. I've just seen it on sonar too many times, and. We know that about stripers, right? They're all going to follow. That fish is, you know, is, is just going crazy, shaking the spoon. The other fish are trying to get the spoon out of the mouth. They're in feeding mode right now. So other people should really be dropping a jig down around this spoon right now because you know those other fish are ready to bite. I don't care. They're all good, man. Striper? Oh, yeah. Now he's off. Now he's off. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Tim, holy cow, look at that. <laughs> You had a really good one, Eric. Tim, what's going on over here? <laughs> so watch what happens here. Bang, fish comes off, right? Father reels it in. Yep. Wham, another hook, oh, hook up. Oh. Another fish that was chasing grabbed that free spoon. And the only reason that fish was ready to bite is because another fish was eating. It was that, oh my God, I'm, I, I'm, I'm full. I don't need to eat, but someone else is eating, so I better eat too before they eat it all. I bet before it's all gone, I better get mine. It's like a primal feeling, you know. It's I'm not hungry, but someone else is eating. I better eat too. And wham, Tim is hooked up now. So we went for from an hour of nothing with all these fish under the boat, and that's three strikes, all right in a row. It's just because of the motion, you know, the, the sound, the noise, the feeling that some other fish is eating. I better eat too. 
Alright, it's about to go off here, guys. So Tim, how do we find this spot? Uh just follow my nose. He follows look at the screen with that. John, look at the screen. The camera. Oh, yeah. Look at all those fish under the boat. They're just parked there. All day long it was like this, guys. It was just all under the boat. Anything you can do to make these fish think that other fish are feeding will turn these fish on. It's up to you to figure those things out, whether it's stomping on the bottom of the boat, splashing a net in the water, making boat noise, just leaving the engine running, anything. These are all little tricks to, to uh, you know, simulate other fish are feeding. Now you can see the rod acting strange, it's vibrating weird, Tim can't control the fish, the fish is acting strange, he can't turn it really. It's because the fish is foul hooked, it's hooked in the uh, dorsal or on the side. It's very common when the, you're jigging these very large spoons, you know, 8, 9 inch, even 10 inch spoons. They might strike the top of the spoon and as you pull up, you know, the hook gets them in the side. It's very common. I'd say if we catch 10 fish, two or three of them will be foul hooked like that. So. It's nothing to worry about, but you can tell he's foul hooked by that vibration of that rod and how he's struggling to control it. Tell if he's foul hooked or not? I couldn't tell. I want to get a good look before you blow it, blow it and lose it. <laughs> oh, right there. Nice try. You got foul hook. Good call. <laughs> Camera had me a little worried. There's just some big fish in here. Good job, Tune. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you can see the sun has gone down a bit. This is maybe an hour later. Same thing. Lots of fish under the boat. Danny finally hooks up here. You can see he was kind of surprised. Wasn't expecting it because nobody was hooking up. So he's got a small bluefish on and uh, it's foul hooked. And check this out. This is right. extremely telling right here. Again, you see the, the rod vibrating. That tells us it's foul hooked. Now, he's going to wrestle with this fish to get it in the boat. He's, he almost never fishes. Fishes maybe once every three or four years. So he's not terribly, uh, you know, experienced. So they struggle to get the fish in a little bit. So the fish will be hanging over the side of the boat. You know, my nephew goes to help them, and, you know, the fish is kicking and splashing and making noise. It takes a little time for them to get it in. So you can see they kind of struggle a little bit there. I'm doing something with sonar, so I can't help them. So they're making a the noise, and because they're making this noise, we hook another fish. <laughs> so he lifts it in, hits the deck, flops around. You know, we're all stomping, we're all moving around, we're what, we're, what's going on. And uh, so this is backed up. This is right as he's bringing the fish. So there he is bringing the fish, the blue fish in. Look at the screen, guys. Look at all those fish, okay? <laughs> so the fish is shaking right now on the deck, making noise. Can't really see it, but, um, but trust me, that's what's happening. Fish is trying to be unhooked while they're making noise. They're all talking and they that thumping noise and wham. Here it is. You can see the bluefish struggling, struggling, flopping, flopping, and then Eric, wham, hooked up. Same thing. Just that boat noise, that splash. The stripers were probably following that bluefish around because they're all under the boat. We're only in 10 feet of water. You know they saw that bluefish struggling. That noise, the splashing, and there's another hookup. What have you done hooked? Don't crank, don't crank. Wow. You know, I've had fish come right to the boat in seven or eight feet of water, crystal clear water. You know, we pull over, over like a, a shoal area, and they come right up to the back of the boat to see what's going on. You know, when a striped bass looks up and sees a boat, they're not going to get scared of a boat. That's everyday life for them. They see boats all the time. They're not terrified of boats. Boat, boats are not danger 99.9% .9 of the time. Boats are to them a great place for fish to hide if the boat is moored for a long time there'll be all kinds of bait fish under it people drop food over the side even if they're not fishing they'll drop things over the side that will attract bait fish they're chumming if they are fishing or they're dropping bait boats usually mean good things to a striped bass any you know your boat showing up and making noise and acting like a boat that's working or dropping clams over Think about all the uh, the lobster boats, the crab boats, all throwing bycatch back. You know, if they have all these small, you know, say they're, say they're uh, lobster fishing and they have 10 lobsters in the pot that are too small, they go back over the side and they do this with every pot. These stripers will follow those boats and just get a free meal. It's, it's a lobster falling from the surface. I mean, that's just, that's shooting fish in a barrel, the big striped bass. Things that we've known in the past about being super silent, they have their places. Sometimes you have to be quiet. But most of the time, noise will bring the stripers to the boat and it will make them feed when they don't want to feed. 
I stripe bass fish for a living. I do it all up the East Coast. I've caught striped bass in 11 different states on over 70 bodies of water. And in every single one of those trips, I was able to use noise to catch more fish. So this is not a localized thing where only fish, it only works on stripers that are being fed regularly. That's not the case at all. It works everywhere. That's a good fish right there. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I could always count on you guys for great comments and great support. I really do love you guys. I really do mean it. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, I really, really would appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up, too. That really helps. It really helps me more than, more than you know, guys. Thanks for watching. We're going to turn this big baby loose here and have some more videos coming. Please check back. I really love you guys. Mean it. She had a hard few weeks, so we're going to give her extra time in the water. All right, Justin, Stay with me. You see how I got her? We don't have any current right now. I'm just holding her by the tail. I'm not working it back and her forward and back. I don't want to damage the filaments in her gills. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll twist the fish a little bit like this, and that just opens the gill flaps on both sides and helps her get a little air. I don't want to move her forward because then I have to move her backwards and gills are not meant to go backwards. I know a lot of times, look at that. She's a nasty fish. A lot of times you feel like you should move her backwards because it's helping you have something good to do, but you're better off just doing nothing at that point. Just hold her, she'll take her off when she's ready. Good job, brother. Played her perfect. Thank <laughs> you.